I'm Dr. Kutesa Annette. I'm the Dean of the School of Dentistry, which is a newly constituted school within Makere University. I set out to look at how we can use teeth, especially the wisdom tooth, the third molar. How can we, how can we use it to ascertain the, the age of a youth of a young adult without documentation? Actually, the background to this study is quite interesting. I believe scientists sometimes we get inspiration from normal things. For me, I was challenged by a colleague. A colleague who came and challenged us as dentists, who was a pathologist, came and challenged us that they get cases whereby they get a 13-year-old and a 14-year-old and they want to uh, differentiate. Is this a 13-year-old or 14? Is it 15 or 16? So when I went back and looked at the literature, there was a whole lot of work that has been done elsewhere. But unfortunately in Uganda, not much had been done. So I set out to see, can we use the third molar in ascertaining age? But most importantly, I wanted to know what is being used out there for the key stakeholders, at remand homes, the police surgeons, even the judiciary. How are they ascertaining age? Are they using teeth? Is the third molar being used? How is it being used? So I wanted to ascertain that and then go ahead and develop guidelines, develop standards for using the third molar in age assessment. What we did for this particular study, we went to Mlago National Referral Hospital. Mlago National Referral Hospital has a dental clinic and it has a high turnover of patients per day. And amongst those, we had our particular catch um, age, which is 10 to 22. And there are two things that we are interested in. We are interested in looking in their mouth to observe at what stage the third molar was. Was it there in the mouth? And this person had their birth certificate. The assumption was that the birth certificate would tell us the true age of this particular participant or whatever. So you'd look in the mouth and then vis-a-vis -vis get their birth date using the birth certificate. And then the second method we used was to take a radiograph. And then we, of course, um, through literature, there are different stages of tooth development that we are looking at. So you get their true age and look at the level of tooth development. So those are the two methods that we use for this study. So when I look into the mouth alone, it might not give me whether the roots of that tooth has, have fused, whether there was anything obstructing it to have come earlier or later, or whether it even exists in the first place. So if there is no interference, we expect that a tooth forms its root, starts forming the root at this time, the roots grow to this height at this time, then the roots fuse at this time, then we appear, or we see the crown in the mouth, either at the whole or full level as others, or below the level, or just piercing through the gum. All those landmarks have specific age interpretations. But, augmented or improved with the radiographic findings where you can see the, the nature of those roots in the, in the bone and even whether the apices or the roots are fully formed can add a lot of information to what you've seen clinically in the mouth. I mostly laid on the qualitative bits of the study and in these bits we wanted to see, we wanted to understand the practice of age estimation in the field we interviewed three categories of people, that is the medical workers, the police surgeons who are dealing with juveniles under the law. We interviewed judicial officers, those are the ones that receive these children or these juveniles from police and from the community regarding their offences. We also interviewed remand home officers, these are the custodians of the children that have been convicted for having committed some crimes. Yeah, so those are the three categories of people we interviewed. It's being a first study to having been done in Uganda, definitely, when it comes to science, definitely, you cannot rely on only one. There's, it call, it's calling for more work to be done in this field. So the key major findings when we were asking the question of what's being done currently, we found that third molar is being done, used, but there was no uniformity. It was surprising. We met 
13 year olds who had fully erupted third molars. So of course that demystifies the fact that when you see the third molar, it doesn't mean that this person is 18 years. This person could be as young as 13 years. So we went ahead and looked at the radiographs and we came up with a table, we came up with a tool which can easily tell us that this person at this stage could probably be this age. And of course we were using both males and females. So we realized that the third molar or teeth develop earlier in females than males. And um, that is a tool that is available and is, can be used.